The snatch is one of the most powerful exercises that you can do. It works your full body and it's a blast if you know how to work with the technique. In a recent workout, Angie and I went a rapid pace and I'm gonna react to it. Grüß Petran, Gregory von Lebestag here. The kettlebell snatch is one of the basics, one of the fundamentals in kettlebell training. Now with this pace Angie and I pulled off, we had two exercises actually before them. That's our standard workout, swing, clean and jerk and snatch. And then we went ballistic in the true sense of the word. And the weights that we're using in this workout was 20 kilo for me and 12 kilo for Angie. So here it goes, the snatch. Now before we get into the snatch, I want to make it clear, what I follow is the idea of a kettlebell sport style method as if I was in a competition. I'm not an athlete, but I envision myself that I'm in a competition. And in a competition, you have to do 10 minutes and you have only one arm switch. That's what I envision myself doing. If you only have one arm switch, you have to have a very good technique. Let's break it down. With the left side, with it. 23 reps per minute and that was beastly and as you can see when the kettlebell is in the top fixation we have a special so-called hook grip so with that hook grip my forearm doesn't burn out and it rests beautifully on my wrist my shoulders externally rotated and because the kettlebell is so deep in my palm on my wrist I won't destroy or kill my palm skin. It's one of the first problems that you will encounter once you start working with the snatch that your palm skin will take a beating. As technique improves, this beating will be reduced. And one day, I'll guarantee you, you'll be able to pull off a great set without having any blisters on your palm skin. That's the idea at least. That's my goal when I'm working with the snatch. The left side, we went a little bit slower. And we didn't start this workout or this exercise with the idea to go fast. It was just one of those moments, Pavel calls it the crazy switch. I like how Luca puts it. He said, the practice that you put in with the exercise is you're putting money in the bank and you spend it on fight night. And that's right where we at. This was fight night. As you can see, I'm leaning back. We're both leaning back. Can you see this? Angie's leaning back a little bit less than I am. And I always envision myself Neil from the Matrix. You remember how he was dodging bullets in the Matrix? That's what you want to do. That's a technique that's called counterbalancing. Once the kettlebell drops, gravity pulls it down. And you want to work like a scale. So you want to lean back so you could compensate for the gravity pull and relax in that split second. So once the kettlebell drops in the backswing, what I always want to focus on is to, my, to extend my knees to about 95%. What happens in that case is I get a great stretch, a full range of motion stretch in my hamstrings. From that position, I am able to use the so-called stretch reflex. The stretch reflex builds up in the elastic component of the muscle and it generates additional en energy once your muscle gets stretched to the fullest and then released. And somebody actually commented on our YouTube channel. He had some great inputs that I wanna share with you. He said, one huge component that heart style lacks by the very mechanics of allowing for more knee flexion is your lack of hamstring loading through full available range of motion. Considering the impact that contractile strength of the hammies plays into not only athletic potential, but also in injury prevention, this is a key benefit of the sports style. Not to mention increased tendon strength and density secondary to solid loading again through full available range of motion. If anyone is using knees over toes guy, they will be familiar with the enormous benefits of quality load through full joint range of motion for athletic ability and alleviation of pain. Love the work, my brother. Thank you, Brayden. So now we're blasting and now we're switching. Did you see the switch? That's something that I want to show you. We are in the backswing, right? Backswing, boom. So now I know it's time to switch. And look at, look at the way we look. <laughs> our, our, both our gazes are fixed. <laughs> I like that. And we go up, right? Boom, you see? So the kettlebell, you switch it about trunk level. You switch hands. Immediately going 
boom, into the hand insertion. And now we are going full speed now. Now on this side, it was 27 reps per minute. So in total, we did 50 reps in two minutes. That was crazy. Now, as you can see, my pace is going faster. And usually, as you can see with the breathing, we usually breathe three times. Once you're in the backswing, once you're on trunk level, and once you're on top. But when you go fast, you only breathe two times. Backswing and top fixation. You see that? Boom, down. And now we felt it. We felt it. And that moment, it was like, okay, let's go. Let's go. It's fight night. <laughs> and you see I'm leaning back. And I'm always doing that heels off the floor to really connect with my hip as fast as possible so that my arm connects. And here Gypsy comes in to give us some additional motivation. He looks at me like, come on, bro. You got it. You got it, bro. I love it. That's our staffy. <laughs> Boom, what a pace. So now some additional information. Now, as you can see, once the kettlebell is in the top fixation, usually we say you want to stop the kettlebell right at ear level. So the biceps has connection, connects with your ear, and the arm is fully extended. However, I wanted to go as fast as possible. So I wanted to stop a few inches earlier, a few centimeters probably would be the better description earlier so I can immediately drop it. Now here you see a beautiful difference between Angie and me, even though we're almost in the same posture and the same technique, it's crazy. Now Angie goes into the backswing with a front grip like this. I go into a backswing with a back grip like this. So the, my thumb is pointing backwards. I do this to release tension from my biceps. However, if you do this, you may release tension and may relax a little more. However, you don't get that springy effect when you have it in the front grip. So that's only preference. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to do front, side, or back. It's preference and whatever you like it. And when you get better with the technique, you can actually switch. So then we come back up. Now here's the matrix move, you see? Pulling the kettlebell, then the acceleration pull happens, but my idea is to lean back like Neo does it in the Matrix, and then I lift my heels off the floor because I wanna aim. I'm always thinking about aiming my hips to the top, and I lift it so that my opposite leg can go into full contraction of my posterior chain, and that helps to bring the kettlebell up. And once the kettlebell comes up, I'm actually pulling myself back into the overhead top fixation. A lot of counterbalancing, momentum, and physics play a role here. And then once I got it up here, I immediately drop it again, really relaxing, making sure that I have contact with my body, that the arm connects with my body before I go into the backswing, which is crucial. And then, as you can see, it's almost full. The knees are almost fully extended. And that's that great stretch that you're getting. And then you come back up. And that's beautiful. It's beautiful to look at. And it's something that really takes a lot of time. And another thing that happens, as you can see, we always go up and down with the toes. That's because it's a unilateral movement. So it's unilateral triggering of the muscle group. So that may happen. I go into a little bit more, I feel this, I go into a little bit more extension with my left leg instead of my right leg. And that feels totally fine. And the twisting is something that Dennis Vasilev told me, make sure your body twists a little because it's a unilateral movement, but don't twist too much. That's something that you wanna avoid. Now, the reason why I call myself the basics guy is because it took me about, let's say, over a year, maybe one and a half years, to slowly perfect the snatch technique. And the snatch is one of the basics. It gives you the most bang for your buck. However, it requires a lot of skill and technique. If you continuously swap out those exercises that you do with the kettlebell, and you do workouts that involve 10 to 15 different exercises, you can do it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a good thing if you're lifting and if you're moving. However, if you wanna get better with kettlebells, with exercises that respect the mechanics of the kettlebell, free weight and ballistics, then stick to the basics and keep practicing, keep working with them. A snatch is included in my workout regimen throughout the whole year. So now I can either perfect my lifting technique, one of the most powerful exercises that'll give you the most bang for your buck, are a lot of fun, 
and I'm using the kettlebell the way it's designed to be used, or I can switch up my routine so on the regular with so many variations that I'll never get anywhere. I'm average at a thousand things, but I'm never good at one thing. And yes, variety is for fun. However, perfecting a lift is the mentality of not only an athlete, but of an elite mover that decides to go all in with the kettlebell, hone their skills and perfect their kettlebell training and get incredible and lasting results out of it so thank you for watching if you like the video like it consider subscribing if you want to see more kettlebell content and if you're looking for a program that builds you up from a beginner level to a more advanced level in the course of about three months and you want to combine it with some easy to follow nutrition coaching because maybe you say i want to lose weight or get in shape a little bit then check out 90 days of kettlebells that's a workout course you find a link in the description 14 day free trial included